Welcome to St. James Episcopal Church. I'm Reverend Cindy Voorhees, and I'm so glad you're with us today. In a few minutes, we'll be starting the service, and today's topic is on the Holy Trinity and creation. And it's one of those Sundays where priests try to get a substitute to preach on the Trinity, because how do you explain the Trinity? The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one, one in three. Uh, so we're going to investigate that today along with current events. I'm so glad you're with us this morning. Sit back, relax, and we got this. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And be God, Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us to, to, to us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together, God called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky, to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, and it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth and there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, 
and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created the human, humanity, Adam, in God's image. In the image of God, God created him, it, male and female, God created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth. And it was so. God saw everything that God had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that God had done, and God rested on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that God had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the church in Corinth. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. Well, happy Trinity Sunday. Aren't you all celebrating in your seats today? <laughs> I think not, but uh, today we're going to explore the idea of the Trinity because it is Trinity Sunday and hopefully delve into some very um, relevant matters in our society today. So I think the Trinity has been explored so much, and just as the Sunday where priests joke, um, you've heard before, that we try to get a substitute for Sunday, the Trinity Sunday, because who wants to try to explain the idea of, you know, three and one, one and three, uh, you know, whole Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We'd rather celebrate Easter uh, and Christmas and the Annunciation and <laughs> Pentecost because these are sort of tangible events in the Bible. But, you know, the Trinity is uh, the complicated one. And, you know, there's been historically, you know, we've explored the idea of, oh, well, think about an egg, the shell, the white, and the yolk. But the, you can even, you know, think about a tree, you know, the roots, the trunk, and the, and the leaves. Or my personal favorite is water. You have liquid vape steam and, you know, ice. Uh, but I don't think that quite does the Holy Spirit justice. And one of the things that I think we have to think about is we kind of have to humble ourselves uh, at the mere thought of a triune God. And I think uh, humility is when we start realizing that, you know, we humans want to put this, you know, tangible kind of black and white uh, picture to God and each member of the Trinity has its own personality and gifts, and so I think you, you just can't do that. So we know God the Creator, as I said in the beginning, Jesus the Son, the, the Savior, and of course the Holy Spirit, um, who's very hard to define as we talked about last week, kind of the wind, the comforter, the movement across the face of the earth with the Holy Spirit. Well, I think that, you know, we just saw beautiful images of the Genesis story, and we have to kind of actually think really deep here about the creator having, look at the diversity in creation that we saw in just that quick video. And if you really kind of rest into that, you really start appreciating, you know, that we are created in God's image, and we have the ability to be co-creators with God and to have that witness as God does. But I mean, I suppose we could kind of even take the cynical route and say, well, who cares? <laughs> why, why do we care about the, about the Trinity? And where does that, what does that get us? And I suppose that's where the rubber hits the road is that it's actually quite profound why we need to embrace the Trinity and what that means to us. First of all, we have to realize that God is dynamic. Uh, God is creative, creative. God is flowing. God is, you know, making the universe move and embracing creation. And we have to realize that that is a big part of our lives, is that we are constantly growing and co-creating and absorbing creation. Whether we like it or not, we may be digital and on our phones, but around us when we have appreciated during this COVID-19 time nature and people have said that the critters are coming back into their natural surroundings, we actually have stepped back and realized that, you know, God as creator is a beautiful thing 
And God is also diverse when we think in terms of the many, many creation, um, the animals, the diversity of people, the diversity of cultures, we have to realize God is fluid, changing creative ideals on the earth. The Trinity, as we look at it, God is also in community, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we see that biblically. I mean, when you think in terms of, you know, when Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit descended upon the Son, and God spoke out and said, this is my beloved Son. And then Jesus was driven into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. We see again this, this kind of community, this, uh, you know, and this has been talked about through the centuries, that God is in community, and that Jesus spoke to God in the Garden of Gethsemane. You see this kind of wonderful, as theologians call it, dance with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and I don't think that gives it justice. And it, I think we have to remember, who are we to start saying to qualify the amazing aspect of the Holy Trinity? I think that we are children of the Trinity. We have the ability in this mysterious triune God, we have the ability, if we're made in the image of God, to join in as the co-creators, as being fluid, as flowing, as being diverse, as being truth, as being love. And I think that's what we're called to do today during this uh, uh, crazy pandemic, and in the midst of our Black Lives Matter you know, marches and very much so the need for change in society, we have woken up, or the term woke, to the plight of the racial divide. And this month we celebrate pride, and I think the pride um, movement is actually completely synonymous and in complete uh, harmony with the movement we're facing right now. And so we want to move into this in June and look at the pride context also of the, the movement to, for equality. I think that a lot of us have heard, you know, all these demonstrations and we look for things of what to do. And far be it for me to have all the answers, but I do know a couple things that I've experienced in my life and I wanna share that with you today. If we are to be co-creators and in the image of God, and if we are supposed to be growing and moving with God and bringing in the kingdom of God with Christ through the Holy Spirit, there are certain things I think are undeniable right now that we can sit in the moment of this pandemic, Black Lives Matter, and of course the pride movement. Just sit in it. Be quiet, <laughs> listen, because I think we all want to talk about our reaction, the answers we think should be out there. But I do know a couple of things that I've done that I'm not the proudest of, but I'd like to share a couple of things that I think would make a difference. One is when they say vote. I, yes, we vote, or if you don't, then you need to vote. <laughs> But I'm not so sure I check out every person on that ballot before I check the box, especially if there's one person running. And one of the things I think we should start doing is raising up young people, political science degrees or whatever it takes, scholarships, to raise up a generation of people that can serve in our government that looks like the color of our country, that will serve with ethical and moral character, but more importantly, they look like all of us and not just one of us. I think that we also need to look at our school boards and the education level of the kids. Of course, we want to have equal education, but more importantly, I've heard m more, than a, more and more parents say, well, the history books don't cover this part of our history, and I would say that is gonna take a whole other section of educators and people interested in history to really, really, really give the diverse background of this country, and so it better represents what the kids should learn. The other thing is we need to bear witness. 
I think that uh, many times uh, we tend to walk away or we don't use our platform to speak out to inequality or in the pride movement to people of different sexual orientation, that we don't stand up with and for them. When you're, when you're marginalized, sometimes you need someone to come alongside you, well, all the time, and to help represent you, an advocate, and there lies the job of the Holy Spirit. So I think that the other thing we can do is support people of color, businesses, and of sexual orientation. I really feel like when we have skin in the game, out of our pocketbook, and we have that open our eyes mentality, and we support not only local, but people of color and people of sexual orientation, businesses, you will see also a, a difference. Of course, the criminal justice system. And not to down the police and the people that are doing a fabulous job on the street and really, you know, are heartfelt about their job. But there is that disparity, and we need to vote and to speak up accordingly. And again, use our platform. If you are a leader in the community, then we need to speak up. And we need to make sure that people in authority are really of different color, sexual orientation, and diversity. I would say this week, uh, certainly not God, the Trinity, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, but certainly an interesting phenomenon to me this week, actually today, on the news when I heard of uh, Colin, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Kaepernick's, I had to actually ask what team he's on. Oh, I'm so sorry, you sports fans, the 49ers. I walked in a room, they all yelled out at the same time. When you think of him being fired for going on his knee and the condemnation and shame he felt during the national anthem afterwards, not him, but I think people were shaming him, on one knee and lost his job. And I think that was of, you know, a, a national issue. And then, two weeks ago, we see George Floyd being murdered with a police officer on one knee. And then you think in terms of the police officers in the streets with the protesters bowing down on one knee to let them know that they were in solidarity. Would that not be a holy trinity? Would that not be God moving through the Holy Spirit, through the face of the earth, and showing a way of Christ? I was just, I was amazed to see the progression in a couple of years from national shame to a murder to maybe redemption. We certainly have so, 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 so much work to do, my people. But at St. James, I am counting on you to help in that movement for racial equality, sexual identity equality, for the moment in 2020 that we need to open our eyes and allow the Holy Trinity to do her work. Amen. We profess our faith in this gift of God who is love as Father, Son, and Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate with the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Holy Trinity, three in one and one in three, send your Holy Spirit as we pray to strengthen us, guide us, and draw us closer to you during these challenging times. We pray for the Church Universal and all her bishops, priests, deacons, and laity. May we be a beacon of your light to our community and to all we serve. We pray for guidance to the leaders of our country during this COVID-19 pandemic and civil unrest in the wake of George Floyd's and so many others' death on our streets. May justice flow like a river of living water, flooding our nation with your grace and peace. Holy Trinity, may you move every human heart, especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble. We pray for, the, for our celebration of Pride Month this June and for our growing awareness of the plight of the LGBTQ community. God of compassion, we pray for those who suffer from illness in body, mind, or spirit, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. Bring healing and comfort to victims of violence and systemic racism, and to all your children in need. Give them strength and courage as they continue in their daily lives. Eternal Trinity, may all who have died be welcome in the company of your saints and angels rejoicing in the light of your presence. Holy Trinity, you are neither monarch nor monologue, but an eternal harmony of gift and response. Through the uncreated word and the spirit of truth, include us and all your creation in your extravagant love through the wisdom of God who raises her voice to call us to life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And hopefully in a couple of weeks, I'll see you all your shining faces in the pews. Okay, what do we have this morning, people? First of all, welcome to uh, St. James Virtually and live streaming. I'm glad you're here with us this morning. Um, I'm very excited at 11 o'clock this morning. We have Bishop Kathy Roskam joining us for the coffee hour. She rocks, I love her, and uh, she is lots of fun. And she asked uh, if she could join us for coffee hour because she couldn't visit us in May because of the pandemic. So please join in at 11 o'clock. Um, this month, of course, we're celebrating Pride Month, the um, Equal Rights for the LGBTQ Community. And I'm very, very excited. This Wednesday, we have Tyler Deaton from the American Unity Fund uh, zooming in at 7 p.m. And he is amazing. A um, uh, political activist, but more importantly, he's getting the work done, and he's entertaining, he's very fun, very knowledgeable. I hope you join us 7 o'clock this Wednesday night. A link will be sent to you Wednesday morning, but also you've got one Friday night also. So your homework assignments for Pride Month is there's three films I'd love you, for you to watch. The Danish Girl, a historical film, um, that's very, very, very powerful. A Secret Love is a documentary about uh, two women in their 80s who finally came out and got married and uh, just very touching. And Love, Simon, if you want a fun, entertaining Friday night movie night with popcorn, watch that one. The book we're reading is Middlesex, and I would highly recommend the book to you also. Uh, the Blood Drive on Wednesday was a huge success. We exceeded our quota, and the Red Cross reported back that we were able to our blood, the accumulation, was able to uh, help 118 people, is what it amounted to. They loved us so much, they want to come back in October. I believe the date is October 21st, so we'll ask you to be signing up once again. So many thanks for, even our uh, church administrator, Kayla, was such a huge help, and our two in-house nurses, Julie Green and Kelly Redmond. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for participating. 
Uh, the Skyview graduation is near, coming near to us. We have cards that we are asking you to sign for the four graduates of Skyview, and those cards will be out on the Via Malago side with the door open Wednesday from 10 to 2. If you would please come by and sign the card. This is very important to the kids. It's not about the money. It's about people acknowledging that they graduated, and I'm hoping that uh, the St. James ministry team will go in and you know, when they do their drive-by, take a couple of pictures, and we can show you uh, that next week. Um, many of you saw the op-ed in the register on Friday um, that I wrote, and thank you for all your comments, but more importantly, I think that we need to move into you know, the idea that uh, clergy are essential workers also, and so I appreciate your support on that. I think that I sent out a video on Friday night about our re-entry into the church, kind of projecting into June 28th, and I gave you the results of the, the survey. So if you could go back to Friday night's uh, e-blast, you'll see the results. But more importantly, um, I, I have noticed a profound effect on our presence not being here on the peninsula, as I think that more and more people are telling me, we want you back. It's the community that feels better when we're here. And that's a testament to the this, this strength of this ministry, to get back to being the people we are and serving our community and speaking out for the people that we serve and the ability to go out into the highways and byways. I would just encourage you to continue to give to this ministry. You know, live streaming and putting this together, of course, has been actually a, a steep growing curve for us, but I think we're way ahead as far as what we're doing. But we still need your support. So I just want to thank you for supporting St. James and this awesome ministry, you. That's who it is. It's all about you. So thank you so much for supporting St. James. Kent, right here. There's how you give. Thank you.
lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our heart to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who we'll forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord, God of God and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, whose eye in the highest, whose eye Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days he sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray in thanksgiving for the love of Joseph, the father of Jesus, for our own fathers, in thanksgiving for all the love and joy that they have brought to us, and for those who struggled with us, for all who have been fathers to us and who still are, for those living on this side of the narrow curtain of death, and those who have died and are living beyond it, and for all those to whom we are fathers, physically or spiritually, that they may grow in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and with others. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. James and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 
As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the banquet of the Lamb. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have little faith and you, have, you and you have much, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come because it is the Lord who invites you. The gifts of God for the people of God. Lord Jesus Christ, you have instituted for us a great sacrament in your promise of life and love, which we remember now as we hear your words again. This is my body, this is my blood given for you. Feed us in our hearts with faith and trust. Draw us closer to you and to each other and strengthen us for service to our neighbor. We come before you now with hearts you have fed all our lives with the promise that you have given yourself for us. Keep us strong in the faith until we can meet at your table again. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share his body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so that we and all your children shall be free and the whole world live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. The Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard you, save you, and bring you to that heavenly city where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the, in the power of the Spirit. Be to God. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're so glad that you were with us. And please pass along our information to your family and friends, stjamesnewport.org, so that we can welcome them into our uh, church community as well. For now, we'll see you next Sunday at 10 o'clock. This is Reverend Cindy signing off. Have a good week. Bye-bye.